How are y'all? Hello to Southland. How are you doing? You know, I, I cannot say this is this is this is my first time here uh, since yeah. Well, the Brokaw Studios opened up, and I was not here for that grand opening. Uh, and being a 30 Rock dude, I kind of wanted to understand the bicoastal uh, thing. But good evening, everyone. Enough about uh, me thinking about what's happening here, about this fantastic place that we're at. And as you can see in bef behind me, it, uh, based on this slide, we're really going to dig into what we're calling expand the conversation Asian Americans in media. And we're going to get right into the meat, meat on that bone. Uh, my name is Richard Louie. I'm with MSNBC and NBC News in New York. I'm a journalist and news anchor. I've uh, been there for about six years. Love the place. Uh, and this topic that we're about to talk about is something that is occupies a big part of my heart. Uh, it's a very small and cold one, but I do have space for this, and it's it's very important to me. I want to thank yep, yeah, yep. It's it's like a therapy session here. Why not? I'm in uh, California. I want to thank Comcast, NBC Universal, and the Center for Asian American Media, uh, also known as CAM. Um, yep. Yeah. Who who has been to a CAM event before? Who will be going to a CAM event in the future? That's great. That's great. Uh, how many folks here are Asian American, Pacific Islander, uh, and who who who's not? All right. So guess what? All y'all that raised your hand that said no. Uh, it, it, no it, yeah. It, first of all, great to see you. But you get an honorary yellow card today. So I'm gonna ask you who's Asian American, Pacific Islander today. Everybody. Yes, everybody. Come on. Golly. I was, uh, that's kind of, I was reading my prompter on that one. Now, we're going to really look at the topic that's behind me. And, and the reason being is, as those of you who are familiar with CAM, it is uh, central to their, their mission uh, about how we're, we're all together in the same space. And as, as my phone's going off, I don't know why. CAM, it is me, and I apologize. But I'm going to ignore it. Um, CAM, for those of you who are not familiar with it, produces, presents, and curates works in public media, online, in theaters, and on Comcast Cinema Asian America. And I want to thank you all for being here today, because I don't know if I see a, an empty seat here um, tonight, which is, which is really great to see, right? Um, because there's so, much, there's so much interest in this space, and I think, Debbie, you had to say no to some folks, right? Wait, there's actually an empty seat next to you. Uh, so if anybody wants to come on forward, there's one right here. And not to say that I'll, in the Q&A session, I'll point to you, <laughs> but I might. Um, so we're thrilled to see uh, all of you here. Um, we want to talk about this both in local, regional, and national uh, arcs, in which we'll do when we get into this. And this means that we're going to talk about it not only geographically, but also uh, when we talk about platform, right? Uh, because platform is is so important today in that it is almost seamless um, in so many different ways. Our co-presenters tonight, Asian American Journalists Association, Los Angeles, AJLA. Anybody, any AJLA members here? Yay. All right, one and, and me. Uh, that's it. All right, two of us. Asian Pacific American Media Coalition, CAM, the Coalition of Asian Pacific, uh, Asian Pacific in Entertainment, CAPE. CAPE? All right. Kind of like those twin towers of power, right? Uh, East-West players. Woo! Yeah. Still a member? <laughs> no. <Okay>. SAG after. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have. I called. It's like, no, thanks, Richard. Uh, SAG after EEO and diversity, and visual communications. All right. Um, because we're in the space of C and say, guess what? We've got a little video to show you. Take a look. language, but this 
this is just as educational as square one. I'm just glad he doesn't do lame Asian jokes. <laughs> Ideas matter, and when you take a position, you should try and examine what its implications are. That it is not enough to say this is what I think, this is what I feel, and leave it at that. And those co those conversations are not only within the community but also outside. If you were alluding to the African American experience, Latino American experience, those are parallels. But those parallels, how long ago were they? Right. Absolutely. Three decades ago, yeah, yeah. four decades ago. So we're, we're still discussing that within the Asian American community. <laughs> 17 million Asian Americans in this country, and there's 17 million Italian Americans. They have the Godfather, Goodfellas, Rocky, The Sopranos, we got Long Duck Dog, so we got a long way to go. But I know we can get there. I believe it is. It's just going to take a lot of hard work. Asian parents out there, if you just do me a favor, just a couple of you to get your kids cameras instead of violins will be all good. <laughs>was great that was great uh, so you can see uh, sitting uh, up here uh, on stage below the screen some amazing faces here I want to start with a uh, person directly to my left and that's Karen Horn senior vice president of program talent development inclusion for NBC entertainment and Universal Television Studios Karen great to see you Karen oversees in front of and behind the camera diversity efforts for NBC and Universal Television good person to know no doubt welcome to good to see you Thank you. Um, sitting next to Karen Grace Lee, an award-winning filmmaker. She directed the Peabody Award-winning documentary, American Revolutionary, The Evolution of Grace Lee Boggs. Wow. Uh, which the Hollywood Reporter called an entertainingly revealing portrait of, well, the power of a single individual to affect change. And, and um, Grace and I have talked uh, for the last couple of years. And, and really amazing work. So thank you. Good to see you, Grace. Uh, I said to Sandra, I'm a gargantuan fan. Gargantuan, like, <laughs> huge, huge, huge. What? I don't know how big, but Sandra O, oh, a producer and stage television and film actress. She's been nominated for five Emmy Awards. Five. I haven't won. I haven't won. Uh, <laughs> how many other people have been nominated for five <laughs> Emmy Awards, Sandra? And won a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in a Supporting Role. You can, by the way, make noise out there. I don't mind this. <laughs> a Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor Cast in a Drama Series and a Creative Liberty Award. How about all that? <laughs> and this is all for her portrayal of Christina Yang on Grey's Anatomy. I don't know. I've never heard of that. What is, is that a, a <laughs> was that on a couple years? She most recently debuted the dark comedy Catfight at the Toronto International Film Festival, amongst many other things. Sandra, good to see you, by the way. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Rashad Raisani is a TV writer and executive producer. Currently, he is co-executive producer on Shades of Blue for NBC. <laughs> Previous to that, Rashad worked on the hit USA show Burn Notice for six seasons, rising from staff writer to co-executive producer. Not, that, that's not bad. Can, what's in the water? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's really great stuff. So he's a proud alumnus of NBC's Writers on the Verge program, which... <laughs> Are all of you alumni? Because <laughs> I'm joining, if that's the way it works here. Uh, You're sitting next to the right person for that. Am by okay, way. all right. <laughs> we'll talk later. We'll talk later. Um, for those of you not familiar with that program, it champions minority voices in television, and uh, there's uh, there's an opportunity there, shall we say? Uh, there's a gap. Craig Robinson um, is good to see you, Craig. Uh, is the Executive Vice President, Chief Diversity Officer for NBC Universal. Uh, Craig is responsible for defining, enabling, and fostering a corporate culture that values diversity of talent, ideas, values, and backgrounds across all parts of the company. Doesn't sound like a 
tough job, right? Pretty easy. A lot less glamorous than five Emmy nominations. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you have a microphone? I do. Okay, yep. yep. And I'm right. also making sure that I get an over-the-shoulder picture for the next thing, because that is, that is working for you. You can tell the talent from the corporate people, can't you? For like a hi. <laughs> well, 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 Craig, that's why we put you on, on that end, on so, the end, so you can talk like this the entire time. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. My name is Craig Robinson, Executive <laughs> Vice President. What, do, what did you say, Richard? <laughs> just turn that way. This is not the good side, but th th that's, it's not about that. But I, th I, I think folks will differ with you. <laughs> I think that's uh, you have both good sides. Uh, warm welcome to all of our distinguished panelists. <laughs> all right, so... Oh, the seat's filled. Thanks yes. for doing that. I'm going to ask you a question later on since you are uh, so bold and, and brave, and I appreciate that. I'm going to go through a bunch of questions with them. I would appreciate for our panelists to be fast, uh, 30 to 60 seconds if you can. If you need to go longer, that's totally cool, but I'll, you know, and, and interrupt each other along the way. This is a conversation amongst uh, five really esteemed individuals on the topic that we're talking about today. You know, um, it's been said many a time that uh, the API community, Asian American Pacific Honor community, is the fastest growing. But what's even more probably dynamic about that is that this community within itself is, uh, when you talk about its economic power, and that's probably one of its main strengths, when you look at its business as well as consumer power, it's about $1.1 trillion. Uh, it's a rough estimate of the latest census information that came out about, about a year ago now. Uh, the African American community, uh, community about 0 0.9 trillion, and then the Latino American community about 1.5 trillion. So it, it's it's a really a dynamic group, and and with that as a backdrop of what it could be and what it can be and what it is, I want to get a sense first of all when we think of the title from each of our panelists, uh, the title of what today's uh, gathering is about: expand the conversation Asian Americans in media. A and if you can, and I'm just going to throw it out, Karen, because you're sitting right next to me. What does that mean? Expanding the conversation or Asians America? Uh, yes. Americans in media, which one? Expanding which is the conversation, Asian Americans in media. That's our title. I, I actually always am a big believer in fulfilling the promise. Sure. Well. <laughs> That's the promise is the title, yeah. You know, I think it's a conversation that as we look at those numbers that are continuing to grow um, of the Asian American population, and as broadcasters, we need to reflect those, uh, reflect the audience that we broadcast to, and I think that we're very much aware of that. Yeah. Um, so we need to expand the conversation to make sure that um, the Asian American population on camera and behind the camera um, is uh, a, a well-represented group um, to help reflect the society that we're broadcasting for. How do we expand the conversation, Grace? Asian Americans in media, how do we expand that conversation? Um, well, I think speaking from the point of view of someone who makes media, mm -hmm. I think it's finding ways to not only get the stories out there, but finding support for diverse perspectives. <laughs> and even when we talk about Asian America, I mean, Asian America is such an incredibly like undefinable like um, category as itself. Yeah. So we have to think about how the Asian American community is not just Chinese Americans or Asia, you know it's mixed race people. It's people oh from yeah. all different yeah. kinds of intersection intersecting communities. And that's the great thing about yeah. being in, s in the Southland is because it's here. Like that idea that you brought up is is really here in other parts of the country. They don't quite understand that intersectionality of that existence, and, and not even in the API community. Sandra, how do we talk about it in simple ways? So when we're at the water cooler talking to somebody who doesn't understand the space, and we're saying. How do we, you know, expanding the conversation about Asian Americans and media? Like, I often have that difficulty in expressing this idea of what it is and what it can be to those who don't understand Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in media. How do you talk about it to those who aren't so familiar with this space? <laughs> can you keep talking? No, 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 because I, I, no, just keep talking about, like, well, can you give me an example? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Because it's like, I get, I, it, it, this kind of panel in some ways yeah. I'm familiar with. Right. And there's a lot of, like, rote answers, but I, I want to answer your question so correctly because yeah. it's like, I'm not going to, I mean, I could say the no. way that, let's say, I do it personally or how I talk to people, yeah. what it is in terms of my own personal work. Right. And when we're talking about a media, like, for, for a bunch of us on here, I, I, I come kind of in the last. I'm, like, the last. Um, w when we're talking about, like, the top down where right. it's like something is, is, is created and then produced or whatever, I mean, you guys are all doing your jobs, and then I come in. Do you know what I mean? So, 
so I have a slightly different perspective. So, but go back to your question about the water cooler. How do I, what, like, if someone comes up and talks to me and say, says, like, what did you think about this? What did you think about that? What do I say? Yeah, because the question is really, we all have different interactions at our, our the quote-unquote water cooler. And so what did you do tonight? Where were you guys at? A and I'll say, well, I was, you know, talking about this event, uh, expanding the conversation, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in media. And I'll think to myself, how do I express that to this person? So it might be a cab driver. It could be my executive editor at 30 Rock. It could be somebody also in our space. And, and it, it differs for the experiences and touch points we all have. And so I am really asking, what do you most often get asked? And how do you often respond to that being an Asian American Pacific Islander actor, producer, power player in the space, and how do you talk about it in ways that is understandable? Because that's the difficulty I have in making it understandable and accessible. Senator, do you mind if I jump no, in no, with no. something? Because I, I understand what she's saying <coughs> about when she comes into the process. So what I would say, and I think that while I'm talking, this will give you some, you know, something may come to mind. You've heard my title, Chief Diversity Officer. A lot of people, most people in this room, understand what that means. When you get out in the world to the cab driver and somebody says, what do you do for NBC? They don't want to hear that you're chief diversity officer. <laughs> they want to hear you're something much sexier. They're, than they're like, what does that mean? And they say, what does that mean? Right. And I've had to really learn to boil down that answer. And the boil down answer that I found is most effective that resonates with everybody, no matter what sort of where they are in terms of their understanding of media, is, is making sure that what you see on television is created for and features people that look like the world. So it's about representation and about authenticity. And we were at the Variety Inclusion Summit yesterday, Variety Magazine, right. and people were saying, we shouldn't call it diversity anymore. It should be authenticity because how can you create a show? So if you have eight friends that are sitting in a room, they're probably not all going to be white if it's set in New York. So, so that's the conversation. That's how sort of the conversation. That's the way that I sort of instigate it. But I think I hear what Sandra's saying is that Sandra. So thank God there are creators who are thinking about this, and then they want. Then they go to and they say, and then we want Sandra O. Oh. So not to put words in your mouth, no, but no, I feel no, like no, that's. No. I, and I also understand a little bit clearer about what you're saying, and I, I'd say that there's in some ways I I, I would uh, express or I've been thinking about this question on two levels. One is kind of like. The professional level, like <laughs> keep going, blah 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 blah. Which I, I know that that you we need to support each other on. But the other the other level, which is uh, which is like deep deep like water cooler, yeah. like really deep water cooler. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. you're really going for like an americano. Yeah, it's like third cup of water. Yeah, third. Yeah. You're, you're you're a fourth cup of water. Is is uh, is a much more uh, a deeper personal kind of journey, right. which is in some ways <laughs> doesn't have anything to do with this. Which is not the best thing, perhaps, to say right now, but but I think is uh, it. There's a part of it that I, I feel in the work that I do, if it isn't as deeply as authentic and uh, soul searching as possible, it is not going to resonate, right? If it doesn't resonate, no one's going to want to see it. So that's what I I'm interested I'm with in. You. I, yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm so with like, you. and I would yep. also s s I would speak differently to an Asian American than I would to someone who might not have what I think is what might the same experience. So. <laughs> like let's say a young Asian American actress or, or actor, I would say, you know, just don't li listen to anyone. Just like don't listen to anyone. You know what I mean? And it's like go find out who right. you are, kind of thing. Yeah. And then let's say to another level or whoever that might be, I I would kind of uh, uh, I think you do any you, no matter what you naturally do this, you kind of tailor what your what your message is to who whoever you think that you're talking to. And, and that's so well understood. Uh, by the way, I am just who I am. I'm not just this one silo, right. right? I'm all these different things. I'm trying to find my thing first, and that's just one one input to the way I might react to this conversation that we're talking about. Your thought, Rashad? Uh, you know, I think I, I think part of it is just having the conversation is helping to expand it. And then, you know, for me personally, uh, you know, there's a billion of us who have brown cards and not, you know, the yellow cards. So to to kind of saying, you know. Th there, we're kind of the outsiders within an outsider community, and and I think what you know what Sandra was saying is I think there is an incredible hunger from people of all colors to have an authentic experience, and and one thing that we can give is an outsider's experience um, in America, which is a very American story. I mean, America yep. was founded by outsiders, and I think mm. 
that people connect to that universal message when it's told in a very specific, authentic way. And, and, and you know, I'm actually an optimist on this subject. I think if you look seven years ago, eight years ago, ten years ago, you know, you were a groundbreaker. I mean, there wasn't, Absolutely. this wasn't, a, you couldn't have shown so many clips. So yeah. I think it's going the right direction, actually. So, Rashad, since you uh, finished, and, and Craig, you, do you have anything to add about our title today yes, of why I we're here? I, I do, and, okay. and especially on the heels, because I just I want to think about, I want us all to think about it as we navigate through the rest of this panel, especially on the heels of the economic uh, point that you made, which is so important. But I also want to make sure that we know that a lot of the conversations that I have with a lot of other people, media includes news because we're talking about entertainment, but media certainly includes news. And a lot of the conversations I have as an Asian American with Asian American groups is saying, one thing that's very concerning to us is this model minority myth that we're all rich and that we're all highly educated and that we all do great in school because the poverty levels among many Asian immigrants and many Asian uh, families, Asian American families that have been here for a long time are staggeringly high. So I think that we need to make sure that when we're talking about Asian American representation in media, that that story is being told too, because otherwise there's a whole group of people being left behind. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, we all understand the difficulty w when you have, uh, depending whether you look at the United Nations definition of what it means to be Asian in America, that could be 54 origin countries. If it's yep. the census, we're talking about 49 countries. If we talk about the number of languages, it's 100 languages. That complexity, it's like, you know, take a pizza, who and we all love pizza. <laughs> uh, you get an extra large, and you take 1 20th of that extra large, and then you take that 1 20th of that, that pie, and you divide it up into 50 other pieces, and that is all of us who we are, and we try to be who we are, mm -hmm. understand who we are, and then try to, there's no other group that has a, a, a yeah. more difficult group, but it is that which we have, right? Yeah. And so we move forward and smile about it. Uh, based on the idea of Asian Americans in media, just a, a quick round robin here, I want to give, uh, from one to 10, 10 being good, one being bad, give, give me your number, Asian Americans in media, like if we were to give it a grade about, you know, from one to 10, what would that number be? Ten being good, one being bad. Who wants to give me a number? No, let's not do that. You want to do it? <laughs> yeah, because it's like it, it, it's going to be bad. You're going to give it a one. No, because it's like uh, the th there's also there's something in the in the I I I just want to <laughs> just want to like y yes, it's a, it's an issue. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? For us to all kind of just give like maybe like a sucky number or like a number to then try to explain it, I don't I. I I don't think that's a, I don't think that's enough, and it's also like I don't think that's positive enough. Oh, I'm very mean? positive about what we can do, but we have to know. I think um, so. You won't, Sandra. Don't don't give a number then. I I'm totally with you. Who wants to give a number? Because it's we need to be very clear about where we're at based on the spaces that you're involved in, whether it be news or whether it be acting, whether it be producing. Tell me what you think. Your thought is. I don't want to give a number either, but I will say that we have a long way to go. I mean, thank yeah, you, Sandra, for, for, for like, you know, I don't want, like, a number is just too general, and I don't want to do that either, but I do think that we do have a long way to go. We, we, sh we, we recognize that. We um, are building many pipeline programs to help change Rashad, you know, as an example of someone who came through one of our pipeline programs, mm -hmm. and um, besides that, we have, you know, our emerging directing programs, and um, our film festival, which we found Randall Park at, and you know there are a lot of things that we're doing to try to change that narrative and trying to improve and those and numbers. But, but, I, but I, I, g I get, I get why you asked the question, and, and so, and here's, and here's what I would say, because the absolute number doesn't really mean anything unless it's in context, right? So, and we have, s and there's so many. Pla if we're talking about news, if we're talking about um, heads of news organizations, I mean, there are. So are we talking about honor representation? What I would say is that I think that whatever that number is is better right now with on-air representation than it is behind the camera representation for sure. So sure. relative to each other. Will you give we me a number? We no. A general number? <laughs> that, there's that there's more of us in front than behind? Yes. Wow, that's th that's but low. But you, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yes. you know that. You know I'm that though. Like you know that. Now. But you no, know no, that. But, 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 but when you look at when you look when you look around it's at showrunners and, and 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 producers and writers and I, doesn't that look you're absolutely less right. Eight, I mean, because the numbers yeah. that what we look at the numbers, that's what the numbers sort of show us. But it doesn't that that that, that it doesn't look like that to you. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm asking that really I, yeah, in, in a truly ingenuous I way. I guess. I guess I'm. 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 I'm also fortunate because it's like the past couple of years. I lo I left Grey's Anatomy and I've 
basically just been working with Asian American women. Right? Oh, you know I mean? okay. I, I, I don't know. So well, that's what they all are. Like, no, working with you. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know in, in theater and, and, you know, in, in films and stuff like that. Okay, so, 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 you're, so, so that's a different uh, that's sort of a, a world. A, yes, right? I, I, that's an yeah. ability that I'm yeah. happy to, to be able to be a part of and, and, are, are, and I'm purposely focusing my time with. You know what I mean? It's like there are, a, a, I'm sure, a lot, lots of cop shows. Do you know what I mean? But that's not my choice at this point. You know, my choice is to say, who is this wonderful playwright? Uh, let's say Julia Cho or Han Sol Jung. By the way, I'm, I'm doing their plays in, 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 in <laughs> next season. <laughs> um, but it's like meeting up with them and then actually focusing time with them. But I'm, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm jumping to what you're... I'm going to add yeah. something. Please do. Grace or Rashad, if you have a grade, well, I'd love I'm to hear it from you. <laughs> you're so numbers oriented. Like well, no, no, I'm not. So I'm actually oriented. on the full arc of both uh, of both uh, uh, hard numbers as well okay. as that which is not. Right. Both. Well, I'm going to just give context for, I mean, I think what's interesting as someone who I do both fiction and nonfiction, but right. these days more nonfiction, somebody looking at Hollywood like it looks great compared to like the nonfiction world in terms mm. of documentaries because if you actually think about you know the stories that we tell in documentaries that actually represent real people in real communities like the numbers of asian stories asian filmmaking you know the the kinds of stories that break through to get on national platforms is so low it's pathetic you know and so I look at things like I, I started out in fiction and I look at like Master of None and Fresh Off the Boat. I'm like, I should go back to that side of the, <laughs> you know, of the line. So. So you're also below five, uh, which is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to move on from the numbers. I am going to move on from the numbers. I am going to move on. Rashad, please. I'll give you a number. God bless okay, you. All right, yeah. I'm going to give you a four. Thank All you, sir. Right. Yeah. I, and I think, you know, if you just look at the net numbers, like you were saying, they're bad. There's no way around it. Um, but, you know. The, from the time I got in, um, which is uh, moderately long ago now, but um, the improvement is amazing to the point that, you know, I think the trend is what you have to really focus on. Um, and, you know, I have, I was just recently in a, in a meeting with a network that is, has been sort of infamous, and I won't, it's not, nobody represented in this company, but so don't worry, I'm not talking about <laughs> nobody oh boy, home. Oh, uh, No, but where, the, where an executive told me in charge of drama, we are not going to buy a white male lead. Like, don't even pitch it. We want a unique, diverse, outsider's experience, something people haven't seen a million times. That's what we want. And this is from a network that nobody would believe it if I said who it was. And so when I hear uh, that, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I guess when I say that, I, I think when you project five years from now, you know, what is it going to look like? W Rashad, where do you think it's going to be? Like? You gave me a four. Is going to be in, in fi is five years for like the magical number? We're above water. No, I just threw that out. Uh, you know, no, I no, because that's important. Because yeah, I want to be hopeful. How about be hopeful. Ten, uh, ten years? How about ten years? You think ten years? No, well, magical. I think I would move it to a six by then. Okay. You know, right. I, I like to speak to that. Um, yeah. Uh, like, where is it? Gonna, I'm, I'm not going to give you a number though. But, uh, but, yeah. but like, but but m meaning this, it's like I, it might be slower than what we think because this is one thing that I I have noticed, kind of like talking to I don't know Susie or whatever those people are. Those folks. Yeah, those folks is uh, one thing that I, I do not feel that we have had so much in, in for the uh, Asian American experience is a lot of development going on. You know, so example, yeah. it's like, we want this person. Oh, we can't find them, or whatever. Or we want this person, but this person has to be a showrunner. Well, all the, you know, the Asian American sh showrunners who could be at a show are running their own shows, do you know what I mean? That so I, I, I was thinking about this with this wonderful um, uh, uh, director, and he's an artistic director of the Victory Theater, Che Yu. Does anyone here know Che? Oh yeah. Right, so Che found me at some random party 20 years ago. Wow. But when I talk to anyone who's in um, uh, theater, and Asian American, any kind of way, they have been touched mm. by Che. Che has found them. And I was having this discussion with uh, Julia Cho, actually, and, and the way that he, he himself, because he's a great, Impresario, um, he the way that he has developed an entire generation of at least theater actors, theater uh, you know playwrights like that. Right. We we and we all know each other. Many of us know each other, and then we'll you know call the other person, say I have a play, we can do it or whatever. You help each other out, but but he has slowly for the past kind of generation, a couple decades, been been developing us. Mm -hmm. Um, so in that world, there are plenty of people and things mm -hmm. to pluck from. And that's the one thing that I hope, even if it's like someone said, okay, 
let's give this opportunity right now in, in whatever whatever arena. Hopefully we have a lot of people who have already been developed that right. are ready to step into it and then sail. Grace, Rashad, as well as you, Grace, uh, um, gr I'm sorry, Grace, Sandra, as well, is you really bring up a great, when you bring up Che, because I don't know him, but the idea is this sort of ability to move forward, and you were inspired, and this person has uh, been an uh, important actor in the space of moving you forward. What is the muscle set? What is the thing that has really made you successful, the three of you? And then I'll ask Karen and Craig what they believe from the outside looking in as they identify those who've really done some amazing things. That muscle set, because you're always looking for the skill, right? Like, and it's not the question. It's what you see in the answer to the question, what they can do well. So for the three of you, what is that thing that you just do that makes you s has made you successful, you believe, in your spaces? To the three of you. Um, I think I just keep going. I mean, I... stick to just well sort of... Well, I think, you know, it's interesting. Or just constantly being able to re reinvent yourself. I mean, Sandra Oh is in my... UCLA thesis film. Oh yeah, like <laughs> many many years. <laughs> oh ago. yeah, oh, wow. And you know, like working, sort of yeah. coming out of film school and like trying to figure out how to make a feature film, and like uh, many stories later, you know, sort of gravitating toward documentaries because I wasn't waiting for somebody to greenlight me to make something. Right. You know, and so I think it's just sort of figuring out what is the story that I want to tell. I mean, there's definitely lots of things I want to work on, and then figuring out which tools am I going to use. Is it going to be fiction filmmaking, working right. with actors, or a script, or is it going to be a documentary? I'm working on an interactive piece right now. Yeah. I think it's just sort of continuing to go, like figuring out what it is I want to make and just figuring out a way to well do well it. You're a great so example of what you just said. I mean, it's, it's the proof is in the pudding. I mean, based on Grace Lee Boggs and what her story, I mean, how long did you invest in that? How many years did you invest in that? Uh, I mean, I met her like in the year 2000 and then the film came out in 2013, but I wasn't working on it full time. <laughs> you know, it was just sort of like this thing where I met this woman, I was like, this is a story. Nobody really knows what it's going to be, but I believe in it, and yeah. this has to be out there. So that's a, that's a muscle. In the meantime, I Stick made like three it, yeah. or four other things, mm. right? So yeah. An awesome documentary. Really, really awesome. To our other two folks. Rashad, you first. Uh, I would say, I, I, you know, off of that, perseverance and resilience, yeah. you know? Um, and I think just sheer competence. You know, I, I, I was lucky enough that because of the Writers on the Verge program, um, they put me into a, a show called Burn Notice many years ago, and that particular show really emphasized the basics of sort of writing and producing for television. Not all shows yeah. do it that way. And so it, it gave me just a basic fundamental skill set to be a writer-producer, which then makes you a valu com valuable commodity no matter what color you are. And then once you have that skill set, you know, this is you know, specific to a TV writer-producer, yeah. you can then tell your stories in a way that's a little bit more undeniable because people need that competency no matter what color you are. Hmm. Sandra? I'll ask uh, Grace to answer that question. <laughs> 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 she already did. No, but no, for me, well, because yeah. it's also like, it's like, I can't really answer that. It's basically what you guys feel or see from me. Like, what do you get? I don't know. I can I can say like, oh, my imagination or whatever. Well, then I, I think that's a good time for me to jump in. It's, yeah. you know, it's what Rashad failed to say and what Sandra is too humble to say. It's talent, you know, like mm -hmm. first and foremost, y we need to find people who are talented um, at whatever they do, whether it's writing, directing or acting. What's talented? Uh, well, you can tell talent. Um, you know, well, I mean, it's every, it's not, not, no, and we're not going to like publish it in the papers tomorrow. It's more like for you, Karen, when you're out there, there's that X, and, and everybody has their specific it thing. It that it is, is their doing X. something that makes that stays. For me, it's doing something that stays with me. It's it's reading a script that I think about later. It's seeing a performance or watching a film that sticks with me a little bit. Um, that is um, telling a story that is universal but specific enough to their own life. And I think that's one of the things that most new talent, you know, forgets is that you ha this is a broadcast, you know, for us it's a broadcast network and to be able to tell your story but in a universal way. Um, and then, like Rashad was saying, you can go back and be more specific once you have that ability. And also what Rashad didn't say is, is that he gives, and I'm sure Sa Sandra does too, like they give back. So Rashad comes and talks to our writers a lot. And it's once you've found that success right. to keep growing it yeah. and finding it and nurturing it is really important. So what was Rashad's ex? He's a good writer. He's good a damn writer. good writer. There yeah. you go. And that <laughs> is so important, <laughs> especially really in news, important. right? When we're looking <laughs> yeah. at, yeah. 
What's the X you're looking for, Craig? What's what's that well, well muscle? I think, I think Rashad talked well, and, and also I'm going to give a perspective that also, because remember, I work across the company, so I'm also looking at Asian American executives and trying to make sure we have representation at the corporate level, too. And so they're, and while and we're by talking. Way, for, for folks, you ran KMBC as well. You have a lot of different muscle sets I, I, that I you did, offer. I did. I was general yeah. manager of the, of the TV station here for four years. But when you take a look, and I realize, of course, it, uh, that creative skills are different than corporate skills. But I think when we talk about skills, when I meet someone who is absolutely, and I met Sandra tonight for the first time, I've heard about Rashad for a long time, but when you meet them, what you immediately get from them, and, 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 and when you take a look at the project that Grace worked on, and for 13 years, what, what you immediately get is not only IQ, because we talked about they have to be talented, and you say, what does talent mean? But EQ, it's an emotional, a very high emotional quotient, because as you can be the best writer, you can be the smartest CEO, but if people don't connect with you and don't want to work with you and you can't convince them to come along with you for the ride, you will not succeed. I, at a CAPE event, Coalition for Asian Pacifics and Entertainment, I think you all know, I was talking to a very successful Asian American writer. This guy is great. And I said to him, and he is doing a clinic for other Asian American writers. And I said, where is it that you see the most work that needs to be done? He said, it's in teaching people how to behave in the writer's room. He said, because as Asian Americans, I'm quoting him, he said, sometimes we don't want to rock the boat. And he said, and we have to argue with actors about this. And he said, and you got to learn to be that guy in the room. I've never Sandra. heard that. No, um, I, I totally get you. Because when you're saying about, uh, about uh, how to be in the room, that does not mean that you are uh, giving up your say or that you're being quiet or any of that bullshit. You know what I'm talking about. You know yeah. what I mean? So th I that's not about that. That goes back to what you said. It's, it's also about, it's about authenticity. Yeah. Well, Do you know and, what I and mean? That yeah. And that's the other thing I, I really want to talk about. Because when I meet a lot of uh, uh, people in development courses, and we talk about, so people sometimes think, all right, then I'm going to be sort of the classic Western personality. Hi, nice to meet you. And, uh, you know, just come on social. Don't do that. Be an authentic I'm version. I'm sorry I did that, okay? I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I know that was a that was a passive aggressive way of me telling you to stop doing that. <laughs> no. No, but but it, it but it's but it, it but it, it it you have to find the way to do that because look, I, I've only I've only been in, in Rashad's company for a few minutes, but he's not a scream at you kind of guy, tell a lot of jokes, do that kind of thing. But he found his way to make his point without sacrificing anything while still being who he is. And part of that is an Asian American man. So I think that I'm saying that, so like, find your thing. But what, so what's that X? It's when you're in the room, listening, and knowing when you're not connecting. Yeah. Um, really great answers to all, uh, from all of you. Uh, for me, as, as I look at, at journalists, just to add to the conversation, it is when you look at uh, failure to passion is the inverse proportionality. The more you have failure, the greater you have passion. Mm. So if, if, if failures like this, passion that results from that failure is always greater. And I think when I see that, I'm like, wow, you're learning. You really have that muscle to move forward. Because every time you have a failure of this degree, but your passion goes up by this much, that's awesome. That means you really have that magical mix of moving forward, at least in journalism from what I've seen. Because you cannot be pushed back by that bad story, that time you flubbed on air and you called things <laughs> certain things you should not have I, I want to throw it out to our panel now uh, you've now you've got that uh, arrow in your quiver that silver bullet where you can do anything you want uh, and you can now expand the conversation of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in media what is it what is that silver bullet that that arrow that you pull out of your quiver because this it's now been given to you with your expertise what will it be because you all have different great backgrounds and, and, and successes, so it's going to be very helpful. I just want to say the sample questions that we were shown weren't this hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, wha once I met all five of you, I said, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I can ask the tough questions. Because I, 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 I love... I'm just going to say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good, that's good. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Well, what was the question? <laughs> you can do anything you want mm -hmm. to change this dynamic. Yeah, you're queen of the universe. That's right. Too. King of the Queen of the World. I, I think I'm going to still do what I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to find, you know, the Rashad Rissani's and uh, the Alan Yang's and uh, the Mindy Keeling's and 
you know, and come through uh, and, and, and do everything I can to help support them, to make them undeniably talented that no one can dismiss them in a writer's room or in front of a camera or behind a camera. Um, I, and, you know, I think it's partnering with groups like this and other groups to help find them. And um, that's, that's what I'm going to continue to do to keep, like, because I can be a little bit obnoxious when I'm promoting talent, quite honestly. Oh, really? That I believe in. And, um, obnoxious and how? Uh, just not taking no for an answer. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> pretty much so. Um, and we like that, yeah. W you know, my biggest fear is is that we find someone and then, you know, another network gets to, to use them before Never we do. Never seen that happen, And so uh, I, I constantly, uh, I'm going to keep, keep doing that and finding uh, great talent and uh, just making sure that people know that it's undeniable and, and, and what they look like doesn't, um, doesn't mean that they can't do uh, whatever it is that they want to do. Great. Rest of our panelists here. Silver I'm going to become friends with Karen. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm sitting next to her right okay, now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, I, I, I interpreted the question. I mean, it's it's a pretty broad question. I, I say that admiringly because I mean, you, you give a lot of uh, runway. I would say that um, if and I'm answering for Sandra, just FYI. <laughs> 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 you two just first met today, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But it, this is the beginning of a long and beautiful relationship. Yes. No, but but I heard her say something a moment ago. In all seriousness, that I think. Partially, if if I were that, so I'm th what I'm saying is, if 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 you had all the power, I would lo uh, love to be able to go and to work and focus in an area that is a little more super serving a community. Because mm -hmm. what Sandra ha has just told us, she's been doing for the past few years. She has this enormous success out here in the world, and now she's coming back, and. Part of it's giving back, but part of it's coming back, I'm guessing, to your heart and your roots and working with Asian American mm -hmm. creators and producers. So that's the freedom of this kind of success. So if you're queen of the universe, you get to do that. Eight minutes left. Silver bullets? I mean, I think I, th I, I agree with all of what you're saying. I, I think I'll, I'll talk about the nonfiction world. I mean, I think one of the things that we have to do, and we're trying to do it, um, is build this Asian American documentary network because like I said before, you know, like diverse inclusion is not like charity or it's not about being just or fair. It's it's about like, you know, um, reflecting where we where we live. It's especially in this climate right now. I mean it's in actually strength. Six days it's strength. we're gonna have an election yeah. and it's just been this crazy I mean, Asian Americans, immigrant communities are you know, in order to maintain like a safe, inclusive democracy, we need to have these different points of view. I think it's really important to kind of go back and support these kinds of voices. Silver yeah. bolts. Can I just add to? It's like also, it is it is doing the job of letting you know showrunners know that diversity doesn't equal risk, and that um, that these different stories are going going to make their stories better. And I think we do that a lot here. We try to anyway. It um, by saying that, and I think that's often the concern is, is yeah. that if I don't know you, and I don't know you if you don't look like me often, that that it's not going to be, uh, it's, it's a risk to hire you. And, and you I know this, Karen, because you bring up these statistics. Uh, yeah. Diversity in shows means higher ratings consistently. A hundred percent does. Yeah, yep. we, we know that. The numbers show us that, which is great. <laughs> silver bullets. Okay, my silver bullet, I guess, you know, I... I, you know, w what you were saying, Craig, res resonated with me earlier. When, when I first got staffed, you know, on the show I was on, it was mostly white dudes. And, um, and I tried to kind of run with the pack um, and was moderately successful at that. But what I didn't realize uh, until later is, and that's not what they wanted me to do. They didn't want me to run with the pack. They wanted, you know, a little bit more authenticity of somebody who grew up as a Muslim kid in, in South Texas and Mississippi and, you know, being a complete – weirdo outsider everywhere I went. That's a story. And and so I think so now I, I really look at that's what I that's what I bring to the table is I am the yeah. short man mm. who's had this weird outsider mm. experience and mm. all those things factor into how I view the world. So I need to tap that. And that may end up being a story that features an Asian American actor or it may not, but it's it's more about the telling that authenticity of that emotional experience and then letting the story, you know, be as true as it can be. If I were queen of the universe. Yes. <laughs> Sandra O. Oh, queen. All the things that I'm thinking now will come to fruition. But I can't tell you what those are. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. We will let Sandra do that. Mine would be take my wand and go, bam, pipeline, gargantuan. 
pipeline gargantuan. Well, that's well, my word well, for the day, I guess, but, isn't but, it? But, but something that Karen said, and the other thing that if you could just make the world more even, it would be that the failures, because we know that there's a very high failure rate in this business. There's a lot of swings, but, you know, that that the failures of the underrepresented would not be overly analyzed. Because oh. what we know is that there are a lot of non-diverse showrunners and writers and who have had a series of flops and are yet given the chance to produce or write again. And of course, as women, as people of color, as LGBT, sometimes they're like, well, we tried that. Yeah. So if you could wave a wand to be right. like that, everyone's, yeah. fa six, uh, everyone's failures would be viewed in the same way. O okay, so I have to go to Q&A here, but you just brought up a point, and, and before Debbie canes me, you know, gives me the hook here. Yeah. Let's, let, let's talk about the sub-segments in the Asian American Pacific Islander community. You brought up LGBTQ. Let's talk al also about South Asian, uh, Korean American groups being ultra su uh, successful I within the API community as we as we look at just the numbers. Why? Why by numbers? By numbers. I mean, when you look, yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, you know, hey, throwing it out there. Uh, as well as this multi-platform success for the API community. There's if when you look at digital spaces, why is it that we see the Nigahiga? Why is it we see the Wong Fu do so well? So. Reflect on any one of those three topics, and then I have to go to Q&A. Uh, and, and, and yes, yeah, she's, not, she's nodding here. Please, quickly, though. I, want, I have to hit those. <laughs> okay, I'm going to admit that I'm a little bit confused what the question yeah. is again. <laughs> Reflect on any one of those three topics oh. when we talk about okay. Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in media. Well, number one, uh, the sub-segments mm. in the group, such as mm -hmm. LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, when we look at South Asians and Korean Americans, they've done, and we just had to look mm -hmm. up, but uh, you know, the reel that was earlier. Why mm -hmm. are they doing so well? Or other segments? I may be oversimplifying, but I've seen hyper success in those sub segments within mm -hmm. the API community. Finally, the multi-platform success of APIs. When you look at just sort of the way the Wong Fu's have done well, uh, talk about any one of those three, because uh, I want to hit all those topics, but I've run out of time. Well I, well, I think if we're talking about YouTube and we're talking about some of the success there, I, w what I see there that I love is that um, we as a community have said, all right, so if I can't get my thing on the air in this way, I'm going to go to a place that has democratized that capability and let the people decide. And also, we know the numbers show that we are very active online. So it's it's a perfect marriage of where we spend a lot of our time and a place where people can't tell us no. We put the content out there for Michelle Phan and then the millions of people will come. So I, 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 I think of nothing, I, and I don't look at that as a, a thing where we should only be focused on moving over to this because you know broadcast is where we all want to end up. That's that, that's a, that's a legacy business that's still very strong that we love, but I think that be, being really successful in that in that digital space can, in and of itself, be a goal. You should it shouldn't only be with the hopes to get a show on a cable network. Quickly to the rest of our panelists, reflections on any one of those three well topics. I, I I'd try and put this out there to all the Asian American, um, you know, everyone. <laughs> what am I saying? The world. It's it's it, it, uh, to 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 actually figure out what your goal is. What do you actually want to do? You know what I mean? Because, uh, God, it's going back to that qu that question, that point about authenticity, and then the thing that I'm I know that I am deeply searching for. You know, mm. what stories do I want to tell? What stories do I not want to tell? I mean, what do I really want to say? Because the better that we know ourselves, because I feel like I feel like it's also like, you know. If you have that classic immigrant upbringing, right? It's like you have that heaviness over your head of your family and blah, blah, and what you're supposed to do. And I think in some ways it's harder for us to figure out who we are. Mm -hmm. There is this, this kind of a, a, a weight. Uh, the pain that we feel when we're not included, we don't see ourselves, it, it's, it's a different and it's a very specific pain. It's so present for me. And I've done a lot. I've been, I, I've been very, very blessed. But it, but like things like Oscar So White or anything, are it, 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 it's so at the surface for me, um, and, and there's a deep pain there, right? Yeah. So whatever that is, it might be for you. Find that out, and then talk about that. And do a story about that, mm -hmm. uh, because there's something about I don't know, maybe our mind frame or how we're grown up or whatever. I've always thought it's like, 
you know, I wanted to like go out and like talk to all these high schoolers, right? And just say, don't go to college. <laughs> <laughs> just fuck it all. <laughs> and you know, and go find out who you are. Because yeah. the sooner that you do that, yeah. the better you're gonna be in that room to say, you know what? Actually, here room that I'm not usually a part yeah. of. Yeah. Who am I? I can be here, and you can't knock me over, yeah. right? If you don't want to hear my story, that's fine. Because I'm gonna find this place. It might be this thin, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Like it's like I was doing a play at South Coast. It was a very short run, uh, but it's like every night it was a thousand percent, right? I was working so hard, mm. um, and it, it was it was a small house, like 250 people. I know in Grey's Anatomy, it's like it's like millions and whatever millions, right? But it's like what I'm interested in at this point in my life is like what I'm about to give to 250 people. Hopefully, you're going to change people. You're going to affect people. So that person that it's, it's about a student and a, and a professor. But it's like hopefully that student who might be out there will feel something and change something mm -hmm. in their own life to go ripple, ripple. Do you, you know what I'm saying? I totally so, get you. So, yep. so, so, totally in I would it. say in our community, the things that how we grew up, or the, th the I, I don't know how to talk about it other than it's like this fucking thing, you know, the thing where the expectation, yeah. Yeah. you know, the, the expectation, and also our drive to be right or our drive to be have get that A right. It's to break that open, you know. It's to it's to break that open to break even the it's seal, just like break it. Yeah, it's yep. to even just like you know, well, screw beyond television. Yep. You know what I mean? Like just mm -hmm. do something else or or something big. Uh, there's something yep. that's too small even. Uh, I'm saying that all wrong. Band-aid, scab, I get you. Yeah. All right, get it done. Sorry, I said it all wrong. But I didn't know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I got it. Go clapping. Hi. The rest of you? You know, I just. We've got to close. Uh, yeah, get I to Q&A. You could do Q&A because I was just going to. You have no reflections? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know what, what Craig, like. There is a big index online, and I think that um, you know there are agents who are out there whose jobs it is just to scour the internet to find the next talent, and and you don't have to wait for someone to give you permission to do things to tell your stories. Um, you know, when they make enough noise, we'll find them, and I think that that is um, that's a really that's probably the reason why there is an over-indexing of Asian online, and I and I and I think it's a good thing because we'll find them. So you're good. You're um, good, Grace. Okay. Just one last thing about sort of these subcategories yeah. of Asian America. Yeah. I think rather than think about that, I'm more interested in thinking about where Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders fit into the larger com conversation about communities of color. You know, mm. what are relationships with African Americans, with Latinos? I mean, I living in Los Angeles, I see that every day and that's not even reflected, you know. So, mm. you know, even even the, you know, the communities coming together, communities colliding, I think that's you know, within the context of communities of color mm -hmm. talking about each other rather yep. than in yep. reference to a white society, I think that's mm -hmm. also really important to talk about. Ethnicity, gender, a lot of parallels. A lot of parallels, a lot of lessons to be learned. Uh, we have two microphones out there, I think. We have one or two? We got one. Uh, who has, has a question? Raise your hand. One in front right here. Name and hello. Hello. Hi, uh, my name is James Baum on the board of uh, CAM. And uh, one of the big reasons why I'm on CAM is because I believe that media has an impact much outside of just entertainment. And this is bouncing off a lot of what Grace was just saying just now. Uh, so my question is, um, what kind of impact outside of entertainment do you hope that having more Asian Americans in media would have in the future? Great, 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 great question. Any other questions? We can, one back there. We're going to throw two questions to our panelists at the same time for time's sake. It's coming. Here we go. There we go. All right, great. Uh, hi, I'm Erin. Um, so as an Asian Australian living in America, mm. um, I wanted to ask this question. So we in Australia, we have people like Tony Ayres from Matchbox Pictures who tries to produce a lot of um, Asian or multicultural content in Australia. However, um, when, we, when you guys spoke about the idea of being risk, um, having risk, Australian TV networks are extremely risk averse. And that's a big problem because not many people are going to accept multicultural content. They feel that it's not going to yield the audiences or the um, viewership that it should. So 
my question to the panel is what lessons can we get and so I can relay back to some of my people um, back in Australia. So broader effects of what diversity and entertainment might mean for whatever that larger group is, right, that larger space. And second, uh, North American lessons learned in diversity at the highest level brought back to Australia specifically, down under. Um, can I uh, uh, speak to that first question? I think uh, for me, I when I see it personally, it's a it's a salve. Do you know what I mean? There's something, you know. I'm, I'm probably just I'm obviously I'm the person who's holding the emotional content of this <laughs> this conversation, <laughs> um, or the one who can talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but it's it's an actual it's an actual salve. I think it's quite actually for me m mysterious. In a way that I, 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 I could so deeply relate, like I remember when uh, President Obama was elected, I was at work and there were a variety of, of African American um, uh, crew members, many of them who were weeping, right? And I, at first I remember looking at Nicole, I'm like, oh, I'm, so, I'm so happy, why is she weeping? Oh. <laughs> oh, I get, I get why she's weeping. I get why she's weeping. So. So for like for someone like me, the only person I had was Connie Chung in, in some ways, right? I would always be scouring, searching for anyone speaking on MASH, mm -hmm. you know. Um, <laughs> uh, but what also that ga gave me is is the sense of um, place and confidence, you know. So the more that we have different representation out there, I think it opens up the possibility of what we what we can do. You know, in terms of your Australian question, um, I would show them Alan Yang and uh, Aziz Ansari winning the Emmy, you know, for Masters of None. I would show them the success of Grey's Anatomy with Sandra Oh as the star, one of the stars there. I mean, I think that um, uh, success likes to be copied, and if you show them the success of multicultural talent on air and behind the camera, then it should be, I mean, a lot of, I mean, we take a lot of the success of, of British and other platforms and other uh, other countries, you know, successful programming. Show them these successes as well. And show them that study you and I were talking about. This, yeah, so economic like study like about the buying more power. Diversity, no, no, more diversity, yep. more higher ratings. It yeah. was like, yeah. duh, it's right yeah. there. Yeah. I think, and I think for the Australia thing, uh, one of the reasons why, and I don't, I don't know the Australian landscape well enough, but. Um, there's just so much content now in in our s in our system at least between broadcast and streaming and cable that I think one of the 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 incentives to use diverse people is because people just need authentic original stories and America's bored by the waspy thing they've seen for 60 years and so I think that's a, a motivator too to just take flyers on I mean a season Zari or Mindy Kaling or you know it's just nobody's heard that story and then bam they break out I think representation is huge. I mean, not only seeing these fictional characters in Hollywood, but also if you saw like Tammy Duckworth, you know, this veteran, like Iraq War veteran oh, yeah, who's yeah, running yeah. for yeah. Senate. I mean, all of these images that we see of people as politicians or actors or, you know, scientists or whatever, uh, I think that helps, under helps, us, helps us visualize like a, a, a country that actually reflects, you know, who lives here. I think representation doesn't just apply to like the media, but it also applies to, you know, we live in a country that's supposed to have a representative democracy, a representative government. I think it's directly connected to that. It's empowering to see these images. And I think about this a great deal in news in particular, because Richard and I have had a lot of conversations about this, and, and with MSNBC, with the 24-hour news network, and with all these news platforms, we're very, very focused on making sure that when we toss to an expert that it isn't always a silver-haired white gentleman because that's that shapes how people think smart people, what, peop what smart people look like, and it shapes what our youth thinks. And so every time they go to an expert, if they see it's a white guy, um, that just reinforces some of some of these, these thoughts. So we were really trying to be so purposeful in saying, so when we're talking about um, a new dermatology procedure, why can't that be an Asian American female dermatologist? W w w we don't only have to go to the Asian American expert when we're talking about immigration. We don't only want to go to the Hispanic expert when we're talking about the border. 
Um, but let's mix it up so that you find, sadly, I think in network news, the unexpected expert. And I know that you are very mindful of this, so that when you're talking to somebody, it's like, so you look up and you think, that is great. Here, here, is, here is a South Asian person in a turban talking about um, McDonald's stock price performance. That absolutely, back to what you said, that impacts how your brain works because we, y we all, even as members of a diverse community, we're subject to that. I mean, there have been numerous studies. They show th things to children. They ask them questions. They learn it very quickly. Oh, older white men are smart and they're the smartest of the group. This comes from that constant barrage of what we see across the landscape. And, and it's somewhat passive. So when we see the story that you worked on for so long here, Grace, uh, w about Grace Lee Boggs, uh, absolutely inspirational as a civil rights leader, as a revolutionary, right? And you saw that 12, 13 years ago and what that might mean to America, talking about civil rights. Wait, APIs involved in civil rights? What did it mean to me? I mm. mean, it was powerful to meet this person and then understanding that that would have an effect on many more audiences. You know, and me I personally, just see seeing her, like yeah. I, I, I was very late in the game, uh, but seeing her inspired me and seeing Sandra on air for all those years was inspiring in passive ways that I don't know about when I decide I'm going to become a news anchor, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so th I think existentially, there's all these uh, uh, things that at some point, this is not about partisanship, mm -hmm. but when Al Sharpton's out there and for that community, something happens, right? Uh, who comes out? Al Sharpton. When Debbie Stabenow was running for, for, for Senate, a re-election in 2012, there was an ad that came out that uh, was seen as racially charged. Uh, you know what group came out uh, to defend uh, Asian Americans in, in, in Michigan? Black pastors group mm -hmm. came out, stood, eight of them, in front of the microphone and said, you cannot do this. Yeah. So I think seeing folks like Grace Lee Boggs in front of the camera, we just can't they, they, they do over index. Seeing you on TV over indexes because it, it inspires who's going to be that Al Sharpton, not about politics here, just about who's going to stand up. And it's going to happen because they're fresh off the boat and seeing that story. Some kid's going to go, I can be that person. I w when I was at the RNC and uh, I was at one of the API events, uh, one, one um, uh, I can't remember, I think it was Pakistani American, he, s he stood up and I was just talking to him and he said, I asked him, so why are you here? He says, I want to become governor of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so d when I had to do my remarks and I was bringing up, you know, the electeds and such and so, and I have a special guest, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I have a young 15-year-old Pakistani American who, who, is, who, who, who has something to say and he's like, I'd like to become governor of Louisiana. So we, we can't under-index the value of, of – well, I think you knew the answer to your question, by the way. Uh, and, and that's why it's great to see these stories being told. And, and we need well to do more of that. And the other thing that I would say, and I, it kind of ties back to the Australia question, because we're doing – I'm now doing international work. We're, I'm, oh, I've been to the U.K. three times now because of the actions of one man. It's very interesting. There's a gentleman named Lenny Henry who is a black British comedian, very well known in the U.K., and about two, three years ago, he came out, used his platform, and said, we, UK broadcasters, have got to do something. It, there is so little diversity on air and so, lo so little behind the camera. Shame on all of us. And, it's, and with social media and with, uh, with, with the digital platforms, he got this conversation going. And now, in the UK, that is a movement. And I've been over and had many conversations. And what they say to me, it's fascinating, because I haven't spent that much time there, is they say, one of the reasons I think that you Americans are further ahead in this space is because you're willing to talk about race All unabashedly. Right. Doesn't mean we no. have a long way to go. Yeah. But what they said is, but what they said is, we don't like talking about race. We talk about class. And I thought, and I heard this like after five meetings, and I thought, well, you have a queen, so that's probably why Ellie, you're comfortable with that. But I think that in, in I think in Australia, and I, I can't I have not spent a lot of time there, but from what I understand, because we have a number of shows that are also distributed internationally there isn't the comfort around the dialogue. So having the conversation, as difficult as it sometimes is, does advance the cause. Yeah. And then I would also like to say that the work of CAM and the work of CAPE and its tireless work, sometimes I feel now it must be thankless work, is so important to keeping us moving, moving forward and keeping 
that topic on the table. So thank you for, for the work that you So do. I've been given the two-minute warning. I'm going to deliver on that promise. Uh, she actually gave me zero minute, but I'm going to make it a two-minute warning. Uh, any other questions? Quick two questions. Okay, three, and then make them fast, please, because then I'll let our panelists react. Right over here, here, and there. Oh, wow. Okay. Questions? Hello? Oh, my question is um, a lot of, uh, especially in the community uh, um, for Asian Americans, uh, the Im it from coming from an immigrant back, and I know that the panel touched on this, um, there's a lot of discouragement from the parents and the families to enter this business, partially because it doesn't make money at first, and it's a very <laughs> difficult business to get into. You often have to wait tables or get a, a side job or you know be unemployed in the beginning. Um, to be an actor or an actress, or even um, you know, starting a small market as a television reporter, or and make minimum wage and or just really low wages and go to audition after audition after audition and just a lot of rejection and just really low paying and it's just grueling work. So there's a lot of discouragement amongst the Asian American, you know, especially the immigrant families and stuff. So I want to know what your response is to the families that discourage their children from entering this this industry and what is your insight on that? Thank you very much. Next question. <laughs> Yes, three questions first, and we're going to get this because we don't have enough time. Hello? Okay. <laughs> so, um, with the controversies going on with whitewashing and everything in the media, the movies coming out, Ghost in the Shell and, and Great Wall, um, what do you feel like, as audience members and people in the press and people in the industry, should do to try to d tell, talk about our distaste for what's going on? Because do this, do the 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 surveys and the petitions actually work? Do we alert you guys? We write to NBC, we write to different companies. So what is it that we can do as press and media or as actors or um, in the industry or, or even regular audience members can do to try to get the word out? Got it. Right over here. Faster, or better. Hi, uh, so I'm actually coming from a pr perspective of theater. I'm actually uh, the casting director and production manager for East West Players. So, so just coming from my perspective of, of um, you know, I see all the all the the headshots, resumes that come through us. I see all the talent, but I also see just like for the um, maybe eight shows that show up on say an African American person's resume, which is like Lion King, Smoking Joe's Cafe, Blunder. I see all of those opportunities, you know, versus the 30 productions of Miss Saigon that one actor is able to do. And so that, I, I'm very conscious of the fact that that as East West Players, we we are the largest employer, professional employer of equity contracts for, for, for uh, union actors, for Asian American actors. And I keep thinking in terms of if we're the biggest game in town, what else is anyone else doing and how, how can this improve if just the opportunities aren't even there? And so this is may maybe not really necessarily a question for you all, but a question for this entire room in terms of what as all of us as a community, as purveyors of entertainment, as purveyors of all of this, can we do to provide the professional validation that when these opportunities come up, that people are even in consideration? Last question right here. Uh, go ahead, right here. Keep your hand high, please. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I totally agree that there is definitely an appetite for diversity, um, but I am just curious to know what your thoughts are on connecting with communities who are scared of diversity. Um, I think especially with this election, there's so much, it's revealed so much fear in people. So I just want to know what you think about connecting with people who are scared of this. Great. All right, panelists, you have a lot of good questions to react to as, our, as your final thought, please. Sure, 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 absolutely. Uh, first of all is this idea of w when we talk about culture, right, and the discomfort around, it, it was right over here, mm -hmm. family, right, and how you get around that, how do you break out of this sort of this is the way you should live, you're not going to, you're not going to get into the arts, right, that, that's not something you should do. Whitewashing, uh, what can be done to counteract this, this idea of what is happening here in Hollywood? Then to the audience, you know, the lack of roles basically uh, for uh, Asian Americans, uh, Pacific Islanders, for for different for different pieces, and finally uh, connecting, right? And that that was your I what your the final question, uh, uh, connecting with this idea of communities of color, how to make it not scary. Uh, 
for me personally, I, I, I don't care if they are scared. If the communities are scared of diversity, then it's hopefully we don't have to deal with them. Like I'm not dealing with those communities and s shame on them if they're afraid of diversity. I, that just makes me give more reason to want to be more diverse and shove it in their face a little bit more, you know? Um, so, um, I, I, you know, as an old saying goes, I don't have time for that. I just, I, I just don't. Like if you're afraid of diversity, too bad. Bad on you, you know. You like this. This our our country is becoming more diverse than non-diverse. So figure it out on your own. Um, in terms of in terms of parents, I think like it's hard for me because you know this is what I do. I go out to different places and f try to find new talent. And and you know uh, uh, when you're when you're of just breaking into this industry, you know that's I, I'm you know it's hard for any of us to probably to talk about how you're going to get your parents to uh, accept that and to let you do what you want to do. I mean, I would say that hopefully your passion and your drive makes makes it strong enough to make you want to keep on because, you know, like Alan Yang said in that in the video is, is like parents please, you know, buy your kid a camera instead of a, a violin. Um, if you have the passion for it, then hopefully that will that that will help you convince your parents that this is something that you want to do. And East West Players guy, hi, hi, we know. Hi. <laughs> um, in addition to supporting you, you know what we do here, and I can only speak for us, is what we do is we we try to do very so many things to give um, all actors and writers and directors um, of different diversities opportunities that expand beyond Miss Saigon. So, um, you know, we we often cast. You know, uh, you know. I, I remember we cast an Asian guy as an, a, a white woman's son in one of our scene showcases, um, and uh, so you know we try to cast outside of what the stereotypical Asian roles would be, um, just specifically to make the casting people who come to those um, events that we do understand that Asian people don't all have to be you know doctors or super smart people. You know, they can be. You know, a uh, you know a son who fucks up everything for his mom. You know. Rest of our panel. Uh, gosh, hold on a second. East West. I think it has to do with development. Again, it's like you know, there's a, a bunch of plays that I that I'm going to go do in the next couple of seasons in New York, right? And these are playwrights who've been wor working for a long time. Uh, but that's about I think very like it's slow. Development is slow. But I, I believe that's through development. Um, family. Um, you know what? I gotta tell you, if 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 there are any but if there's anybody out there who's an uh, Asian American actor who wants to be an actor, if you are afraid of uh, waiting tables, if you're afraid of not having money, if you're afraid of not being secure, okay, which is a big part of our culture, mm -hmm. that is a re it's a re it's a real thing. But if you cannot figure out how to be insecure, how to be, if your passion does not weigh more than your insecurity, don't do it. Don't do it. Say that one more time. Same that goes is for so filmmakers. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's just like, yeah. don't bother. I can tell you right now, it's way too hard. Mm -hmm. Because not only not only you're not gonna have mo enough money, right? People are gonna say shit to you, right? And so you better have a very strong spirit. If you don't, then just don't bother. That's okay. Do you know what I mean? But you have to be clear on your passion on what you want to do and what you want to say. Because if you have that drive, it doesn't matter any of this eventually. Um, wait, was there one? Oh, no, community, no. community, uh, community. Um, you know, I participated in a panel. Jody, what was that thing? It was after the the thing with the theater thing. And then remember all, Jody, where are you? Uh, oh, Jody's gone. Anyways, <laughs> it was when. No she no went no to no the thing. She went to the thing thing. thing. No, no, but it was, it was that's fine. She goes out of here. Um, uh, it, it, it was inviting um, a bunch of the um, uh, artistic directors in L.A. because there was some crazy casting thing in theater. So did any, does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. Okay, right? So yeah, La Jolla doing Nightingale. Anyway, but what I thought Christopher did really good job was is that he actually brought numerous artistic directors none of them who are Asian American, right? And talked about it and had a panel. That, uh, like they had a panel and you had a very, very, very energized audience talking to them. So that's the whole, well, whoever the community person was talking about, is about like, okay, I don't know if we could, let's get the head of whatever the big corporations are here just to talk to us, right? I mean, the, the, we're already the converted, talking to the converted, right? It's about ha getting that conversation going, talking to blah, 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 who runs blah, 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 and say, 
really, hey, I knew that you did this. <laughs> you know, it's like, what's up with your casting? You know, you're the head of this. Can you answer this to me? Why, when I take, because I had a meeting, <laughs> and I went, to, I went to their roster, and I'm like, the last Asian American person who was a regular on your place Stop. was me. Mm. Mm. And that was a long time ago. I'm giving wow. too many notes, too many, too many hints there. Wait, now, too wait, many I hints. think, wait, but what could this, <laughs> where could <laughs> that <laughs> be? No, 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 anyway, <laughs> but it's just like, <laughs> then it's to ask that person that question. And it's to bring these people to this panel and to say, what's up with that? It's like, what are you doing? Here's right. this, here's this, yeah. um, uh, here's this uh, uh, study that says this. Where, where, where do you see it well, reflected? Well, and, and you tied back, and you said something earlier, which I thought was, Great, and that's about knowing your audience. So I think that to take that question about, and I can't speak to what works at other studios or what the most effective, you know, tactic might be on each individual project. But uh, I would say that if, if as a group, there is some objection to some project, be armed with as much knowledge as you can have about the actual project. Bring experts, bring arguments, and come in the spirit of saying this is not okay and we would like to help you solve this. Because ultimately it's people talking to people and you know, I think think about how you like to be approached when there's a moment of conflict and if someone comes and says, we're, we're, we're way over, you're here, I'm here, we don't like this, but gosh, this is such a bad idea for this and that reason. And if you come in that spirit, I think with any negotiation, um, that that you that you can really be much more uh, much more effective. So get as much information as you come and come sort of as a partner. So I'd say in that way, and then to this issue that I love about um, Asian Americans and the families. And I was asked to speak at the, at the Japanese American Citizens League a number of years ago, and they and the topic was how can we help increase our numbers in entertainment. And so I stood up there and it was about 500 people and almost 100% Asian and probably 50 plus in general. And so I said, and I'm not a parent, but I imagine many of you are parents and some of you are grandparents. So what I'll tell you is that we provide the professional development to Asian Americans who want to enter this business, but we need you for the personal development. Right. So when your child comes to you and says, gosh, Gong Gong, I have great news. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be a stand-up comedian yeah. Yeah, yeah. that your reaction isn't like, I wanted an engineer, I wanted a doctor, right, that right. you say, go forth and we'll support you because what happens is it can't be right. somebody else's Asian That's kid. Correct. That's correct. Uh, Rashad, please. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I was really struck by what you said about the South Coast thing, performing for 250 people after you perform for millions. And, and I think that introspection that you were talking about, I'm actually answering the question about when you come from immigrant parents as, as I did. Um, you know, w if m most of us in this room had some ancestry not too long ago get on a boat or a plane and risk everything to get here, to put us, you know, their descendants in a position to just l not become famous or whatever, just to have like a decent life. So I think if you can be empathetic with why that pressure is there, that achievement to do something here. But on the back side of it is, is if you are, if it you do feel alive and zen when you are performing for 250 people, um, it's not just about doing that, but know that if you don't do that, if you go and become a lawyer or an engineer and you make all that money, you truly will never be happy. So c put that against the pressure you're feeling from the family. You know, is it better to make them happy and feel unsatisfied forever or, and or take a shot? And I bet you Alan Yang's parents are really happy with him right now. <laughs> <laughs> Grace. Um, to speak to the person about the community sort of speaking out, I think one thing that everyone in this room can do is actually instead of, if you don't want to like protest or whatever, you can actually support people like do like be like Sandra Oh like support Asian American playwrights support Asian American filmmakers like she did with me you know put your money where your mouth is and actually go see these movies every time you get angry at like whitewashed out why don't you like go to a movie made by an Asian American featuring Asian American cast I think that's the way to so support sort of like anger jujitsu right take it <laughs> yeah yeah but and also yeah. speak with your with speak with your dollars yeah. there's been plenty exactly. of like there's times and there's movies that come out that I'm like so mad about I'm so mad about you guys are mad about it too and it tanks and I'm like ha 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 <laughs> you know because <laughs> one is I'm not saying it's because they cast in a poor poor way but probably just the movie sucks. Yep. But it, it, but just what saying. power do you have as a consumer? I don't even know if whitewashing lady is still here. Um, what power do you have as, as a consumer to say? And if you are in the media in any kind of way, which I really appreciate this, 
is 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 to keep this keep it alive keep the discussion alive because and that, that's tough yeah. to do too by the way we have to finish it there but i cannot say i love the energy on this panel we could go all night and unfortunately we're gonna turn off the lights a warm <laughs> round of applause craig thank you so much for rashad sandra grace karen We'll continue this conversation online on Facebook Live. So no, I'm joking. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. But thank you all. Thank you all for being here.